Hey guys, this is Davey T from Field Sports Scotland. I'm here to talk about a kind of serious issue here. Um, usually, I've do I, I've been pretty slow recently on the hunting reviews and uh, content for my Field Sports uh, channel on YouTube, and I, I'm going to add this in. I've seen a lot of comments on Facebook about guys who are out there who are just constantly on the hard sell. Now. I don't hard sell anything. If you want to buy stocking from me, that which is practically the only thing I sell, um, then that's up to you. There is, there you're always going to have alternatives out there. If you can't afford the stocking that I've got an offer, then there's nothing much I really can do about that because you, we, I can only, you can only get uh, spend how much you can afford. Now, I was speaking to a few people and. And some, some people have kind of mentioned that maybe I'm running a little bit off what I started my YouTube channel for. Now, I didn't really have a, a big concept on what I wanted to do in regards to reviews and stuff. Um, and But I really did want to prove, and I hope I did in some of my reviews, in some of my videos, in some of my um, uh, reviews, my written reviews on Facebook and some of the products that I've reviewed, that you don't have to go and spend a fortune to get the job done. Recently I've had a great kind of um, relationship with Zeiss. Um, it's not a sponsorship deal or anything, I've got nothing free out of it, just a bit of a chance to play with some products before sending it back. And, and to be honest, out of all the stuff, I'm going to be fully honest, out of all the stuff that over the years that I have had uh, free was um, I got some shooting targets a way back at the start when I used to sh sh uh, used to do reviews for um, uh, John Rothery or Bisley. Um, I've had a pair of boots. Um, I guess you can't really send a pair of boots back. I've had a pair of trousers for free. Uh, tested them, but the the company that I ended up testing and doing the review for ended up not supplying it, the, their brand in the first place. So it was a kind of pointless exercise. The boots I will still swear by and I will quite happily go and buy a pair after pair the, the best of boot reviews so that I, I do, I did get a, a free pair um, but I'd be quite happy to go out and spend the money on, on those. Do not get me wrong, they are probably cheaper but are they better? I'm not sure, right? Um, I, I've went through a lot of the, the high end brands, Harkia, Le Chameau, Mindel, Mindel are just so uncomfortable so in regards to that I found a boot that suits me and the best are seem to suit me very well and they are hard wearing. They have went through absolute hell. Now, a lot of people wonder where I come, I come from. I am not rich by any means. I am not rich in any way whatsoever. I am... Um, a family man, I've got four children I have to support. I um, They've all got learning difficulties, so that makes life a little harder. I seem to shoot every day, which I do. I do shoot every day, but genuinely because I've got nothing to do between the school runs. So I've turned it into a kind of self-lifestyle job. Um, I don't make a heck of a lot of money. I don't make much money off the syndicates I sell. Uh, I barely break even every time that I take a, a guest out. Um, my Half the time, the payment for the day doesn't even cover the fuel for the day or or having something to eat or whatever so I'm not making a heck of a lot of money so I can't afford to go out and buy a two and a half thousand pound rifle scope for a 900 pound rifle you know um, I hear a lot of this questions in regards to on social media that you buy once cry once now I'm sorry but buy once doesn't mean going and spending three thousand pounds on a rifle and that's before the scope now yes fine go do that if you can afford it but that's you don't have to do that uh, one of my most productive rifles um, my browning a bolt 243 i purchased for 450 pounds with moderator brand new right 450 quid for a long time the scope that was on top of it was a £150 second-hand Miopta 7x50 scope that I bought off a syndicate member and it lasted me forever. It was 
brilliant. It still is. It's still it's still working to this day. Still being used to this day. Now, um, yes, I have made some big purchases. Um, not massive purchases. Uh, I haven't bought anything that was over fifteen hundred pounds. Uh, sorry, apart from my thermal unit, uh, but that took me three years to get. You know that that was a lot of saving to get that. That was uh, I was I ended up getting it for eighteen hundred pounds for uh, my Pulsar Hellion XQ38F. Now that's probably one of the most expensive purchases. I got a Zeiss V6 for my six point five Creedmoor. Um, I've got a thing for rifles, but I did this over a period, a long time, you know, a long time saving, a long time scrimping and scraping. I done extra jobs. I, I maybe shot an extra couple of deer or whatever to get to, to get the what I needed and stuff like that. Now, all this sort of thing doesn't affect my children and how on um, what they feed. If it, if it, if it was between them getting to school or them eating or a roof over our head and my shooting stuff then obviously my kids and my family would come first and that is the most important thing to me i i don't care about what i've got and the the, the stuff that i've got i look around this vehicle i'm in the vehicle just now i'm looking over some fields um and i look around this vehicle and i think i've got an exp uh, the stuff that i have got is actually quite good but it's not expensive now my daily, my daily shooter, my 270, uh, yeah, it's a Tika T3. It cost me around uh, £900 new. The moderator was another £300. It was a Stalin moderator. And um, my, uh, and the scope that's now on it was, is a £575 Zeiss, uh, Zeiss Contact Conquest V4. Now, for a long time that had a cheap ass scope on it as well, um, it didn't have a, an expensive scope. I actually got a second hand Swarovski for about uh, 550 quid, um, which, which I was quite happy with, uh, and that sat on the top of my rifle. But I'm going to tell you, that rifle has shot over a thousand deer. You know, that rifle has made its money. I've had it for four years now and I've shot over a thousand deer with it, you know? That, to me, in the end, is all that matters. It's made its money back at, over the the over the years of having it. Now, my Browning has shot a ton of foxes, ton of deer, it's, and that's a basic, basic cheap. Now, I ran my night vision, I ran Yukon Photon, uh, which I picked up, I didn't pick them up brand new. Not one of my products that, I've, uh, that I own uh, up until recently was brand new in regards to scopes. And the night vision that I bought uh, uh, Yukon Photon XT off of eBay, um, I, my Devon torch that I put on the side of it, I bought it off of eBay second hand, you know, bought it at an auction. Uh, I, I never bought these things brand new because I can't afford it. I really can't. I used to, you, would, would I like to go out and buy a Pulsar Ultra N455 or whatever like that? Damn right I would. It's a fantastic scope. And if you got the money, go buy it. If, would I like to go and buy a, a thermal rifle scope um, um, like the, the trail or whatever? Yes, of course I would. Would I like an Archer? Yes, of course I would. I can't afford it though. I can't afford a Drone Pro. I can't afford these things. I can afford to set, like for instance, my thermal. My thermal, which is in the back here. Oh, I can't be bothered looking for it. My thermal, that has paid for itself tenfold because of the fact, and it's not the best one in the market. It's not the most expensive one. But before I had that, the, the the Helion, I had an XQ30V, which I picked up for £900. Yeah, it's still expensive. £900 to me is a lot of money. Um, but it, it paid itself. It did pay itself. And that's the difference. If you're a hobby shooter, you don't need to go and spend £4,000 on a thermal or even £2,000 on a thermal. It, the thermal, yeah, that's great. It can spot things out to miles and uh, for hundreds of yards way beyond what you're ever going to shoot you know you're probably never even going to call the fox in if you if you if that's what you're using it for if you're using it if you use it in the wood to spot deer in woods and stuff like that yeah that's fine but if you're only shooting one or two deer maybe 
or even four or five deer a year, why spend that kind of money? And I think the shooting market has got so, so, so bad. It, it really has. It's um, it's got crazy. Now, I speak to Zeiss about this, and I understand their pricing model. Um, they have done something fantastic by putting out the Conquest V4 out to um, uh, out to under six hundred pounds, even for the illuminated version. Now, when I first reviewed that, that was over to, that was over a thousand pound. Now you get V6 for under a thousand pound, and um, the V8 you can get for under two thousand pounds. You know, and now they're they're bringing they're bringing those prices down. Uh, along with the mar market and how the market's spending, but there's other people out there. There's like there's companies popping up that are th that are selling forty thousand pound rifles. Who the hell's going to take a forty thousand pound rifle stocking? Do you know what? I was another thing I was looking on social media the other day. There, a guy was saying, oh, how, "What should I get for my first shotgun? Um, get one that fits." Do you know, many hundreds and many hundreds and hundreds of birds have been shot by 150 pound shotguns. You know, I don't get me wrong, they're not the finest, they're not the best. But if it fits and you can get on target, it's a great practice, practice gun for denting primers into the sky. You know, you throw pellets over, over birds. And I guarantee you, you you'll hit, kill just as much as that as what you would with a Fiocchi or a Browning or a whatever you know just just think about it it's coming up to christmas you know it's a it's a couple of weeks to christmas and everybody is thinking oh what we're going to get what we're going to get now if there is a certain budget you've got for a gift for your loved one or whatever yeah go for that um use your budget and get the nicest thing that you can possibly get for it I, i've got nothing against that if you can't afford it, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. You can do just the same job with a three thousand pound rifle scope as what you can do with a two hundred and fifty to three hundred pound rifle scope. It's and it's the same uh, binoculars. Yeah, I, I don't actually have a pair at the minute. I don't have a pair of binoculars at all at the minute. I'm using my spotting scope because I broke my Baron Strouds. Um, can't really afford to replace them at the minute, so I will do. I will replace. I will replace them before the summer, um, or before I start taking guests back out. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to save up for a decent pair. You know, um, you can get Baron Strides for under a hundred pounds, uh, and they are fantastic. I used them for many years. Now that's that's all you need if you're a recreational stalker. You don't need anything special. You don't. The Zeiss Victory RF. I will. I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to afford them and the price has come down a lot so I probably will end up buying it the fantastic pair of binoculars and they'll, again it'll be a purchase that I've probably made a decision to do over a couple of years not on a whim you know I'm not taking credit out in anything like that I'm not putting my, my family into jeopardy so don't be stupid enjoy the shooting sport the most simple the most enjoyable days are with the simplest equipment guarantee you I've got to say this there's many a guy that's paid two thousand pounds for a weekend uh, sporting shooting with a shot a shotgun shooting um, and their equipment has been no more than what you would have by walking around the farm you know uh, there's many a deer being shot in jeans and trainers there's uh, many a deer being shot in uh, with 200 pound 150 pound second hand rifles is what they have done with brand new 2000 3000 pound rifles probably more deer with the cheaper rifles if it shoots straight if you can see through it if it works that's the most important thing is if it works then and you can afford it buy it buy it like you want to own a blazer go for it i don't care you want to own a seiko over a tika go for it I don't care you want to own a browning I don't care if you can afford it buy it but don't take the hard sell I'm sick and tired of hearing 300 pound 150 to 300 pound torches being sold in the marketplace by guys who are so rude absolutely rude 
right? Who have forgotten that there's people out there that make less than two hundred pound a week, you know? That I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Don't give the hard sell. If somebody is putting their post on Facebook, I have a entry level or on a budget. That's it. The budget. That's the budget. You know. That's his. That's how much his family can afford to spend. If it, if it's only fifty quid, yes, you can get a decent IR torch for fifty quid. Don't get me wrong. It's not going to get, show you out to six, seven hundred yards. But if you've got a four point six bloody photon, and uh, or a or even a six point five photon, and you're shooting rats in a shed. You don't need anything big. You just need extra light. To be fair, the photons, um, the, the the photons built in IR probably would do the job just as good. You know, we're not blind. You know, if you can't see what, if you can't see it, don't shoot it. I I, I just don't get people. I really don't. Anyway, I've, this is kind of my rant uh, to the shooting industry. We, it's like the politics in shooting at the minute. It's kind of, it's kind of stupid. We we don't. We're coming up to an election just before Christmas, which is just stupid, just crazy. You know, the, our politics um, in the UK is messed up. Now I'm against Westminster politics on many levels, uh, and mainly because of the fact that it's an indecisive uh, parliament. Um, it cannot put policies that suit all you know it really can't it's impossible you can't have um, a policy that they put out a policy for the whole of the UK that may only ser uh, suit certain parts of the UK that uh, and that's unfair and that's not democratic it's, a, it's like Brexit for instance Brexit yes suits may suit parts of England but it doesn't suit Scotland doesn't suit Northern Ireland doesn't suit all the rest of the people that rely on Europe, right? So you got to bear that in mind. You, people are selfish. But if you go back to the shooting side of things, we have lost our way. And people sit there complain about the aunties and how they've did this and, and Chris Packham and people like that. And I'm like, you do realise that coming up to an election, that shooters are a minority. You know, the 17 odd million people um, or in the UK, only about 8% are shooters or work in the field sports industry. You know, I, it's not a huge amount. And people take, and we get very passionate about our sports, which is rightly so, but we, we sometimes become militant and volatile and it's just not a good look for us. We are not in a position to stand up against the majority of the population. And, uh, and the way we're going, we are going to lose everything. We're going to lose because we want to bring out stupid lawsuits or we bicker amongst ourselves or we'd rather troll other shooters and have a go at other shooters instead of actually thinking about what you do. You know, I've had syndicate members, uh, ex-syndicate members in the past, who have um, complained about, about the amount of deer that we shoot on contracts. But I know for a fact that they're using thermal in our woods when they're told not to. I know for a fact that one or two of them have shot deer out of season or, or done unethical parts that they, they shouldn't have done and that's one of the reasons why they're not syndicate members anymore you know you got to think got to think that look at what you do before judging others because that is that's a big problem with this industry we're so quick to judge others yeah I commented on a, a, a stock the other day there in regards to uh, pictures going up about a beast not being growled and things and then taken back to the larder. Do you know what? I actually apologise for that. Because although I wouldn't wait 
a couple of hours to growl like a beast, I'd probably do it immediately or within the 15 minutes. Um, no matter how close the larder was. But if that's how the estate or how the guide or how the stalker wants to do it, then that's him. It's like I heard the other day there a guy left um, deer at the bottom of the wood for two days before picking it up. I'm like, yeah, that, that's not, it's not right. But if that's how you would do things, then that's how you do things, you know. I wouldn't leave deer any more than 10 hours in a, in a wood lying in one place, you know. Um, but that's, again, we talk about ethics. But some of the guys are not very ethical in how they, how they treat other people. And I'm getting a bit tired of it. I really am. I'm getting tired of the attitude within this industry. Um, I'm getting tired that people are not, you, apparently you're not allowed to make any money out of it. Um, uh, you can't live, you're not supposed to live, uh, To be everything's supposed to be free. Kind of tired of that. i tired of brands asking way too much and then doing the hard, uh, not so much brands, but individual sellers asking way too much for their product and then becoming militant and becoming abusive and aggressive um, when you say, well, you can actually do the same job, but cheaper. Um, like I fell out with Nightmaster because the fact is I didn't like the product. The, the, the torch's head came off, you know, when you were zooming in and you get to a point and you think you could get a little bit more uh, focus and when you're focusing the beam and then the head fell off. I'm like, well, I don't want that. There's cheaper brands out there that do an exact same job that, that cost £100 less than what you're, you're charging me. Um, I don't know if they fixed the problem. I haven't looked at Nightmaster product in a while. Um, I hope they have. Because uh, to be fair, if you come stagnant in the industry, it becomes ridiculous. And then you get other people who are have a go at you because you're not using a certain night vision or a certain type of thermal. Oh, I use thermal. I'm going to be honest. Thermal rifle scopes are fantastic. If you've got open flat fields, they are fantastic. See everywhere else? Not a pain in the backside. You can't see true shots. The thermal can break through cover that bullets can't break through. You know, it's simple, simple science. You know, I, I, I picked up deer and thermal with branches in front of them. I know for a fact that if one, one of my bullets um, hits one of those branches, it's gonna go. And anybody who knows anything about uh, working in the lamp, or who's ever shot deer in the lamp, for instance, will know that you see a deer, it is actually sometimes a lot deeper in the wood than what you think it is. You know, you think, oh, I've only shot it 50 yards. No, you haven't, you shot it 100 yards. Or, oh, I've just shot past these trees, but you're actually 10 trees past it. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and the th that, that's the problem with thermal, is although you may think it's in the first layer of trees, it really isn't. It could be in the second layer, third layer of trees. Uh, your thermals picked it up, you know. So that's why I'm actually with the Scottish government in regards to shooting deer with night vision and a uh, thermal. It's better to see through clear glass than what it really is to see through those products when there's cover, you know. And um, and night vision can be a bit a handful as well when there's cover because you get glare back from the IR. So. It, yeah, down in Kent where, or down in the south coast where fields are long and um, and you can see for miles, that yeah, that's ideal. But see when you got cover? No. So look, just in the run-up to Christmas and the run-up to everything else, just think about what you buy, you know. There is good products that are expensive out there, but if you can't afford it, don't pressure yourself. Sick and tired of hearing people pressuring themselves over buying stuff. There's real world to think about. So, anyway, this is my message. I hope you all have a good Christmas. Uh, I'll probably do a video before then. I've got a, a um, night vision. I've got the new sightline review that I'm going to do this, uh, finish off this weekend. So, I just thought I'd put this message out to those who are sitting there wondering what they're going to buy but can't really afford it. 
don't worry about it. You'll get the same job done with the expensive equipment as what you do with your current equipment or something cheaper. Shop around. That's my final say. Have a good one.